Disclaimer. If you are offended by the balance changes proposed in this video, keep in mind that it's only an opinion. Opinions can't hurt you, even in today's day and age, where everybody is a snowflake who is offended by everything. TF2 is in dire need for an update that makes this game perfect. After 5 years of being constantly plagued with bots and cheaters, Valve finally worked on this problem. With the result of most cheaters, bots and most important of all, bot hosters being banned. The reporting system also works. At the time of this video's release, which is July 2024, bots and cheaters are gone. For the dream update, this status quo needs to persist, because bots and cheaters were the biggest problem of the game and I hope that they won't return. That will only be possible if Valve keeps up the good work. A lot of in-game items need a change of stats. And also some general game changes need to be made in order to make Team Fortress 2 the perfect game it deserves to be. The balance changes I suggest here are not intentionally outrageous in order to rage bait people, but down to earth and reasonable. The iconic gameplay of a team shooter that other developers have tried to replicate again and again could never replace Team Fortress 2. The 160 different weapons with insane combinations that alter a class's playstyle entirely are essentially the same thing as different heroes in a hero team based shooter. A lot of weapons in TF2 are very well balanced, but there are some that desperately need stat changes in order to be usable. There are also some weapons that are viable, but either overpowered, underpowered or straight up hell to play against. So let's start with those. The Scorch shot for Pyro is not really overpowered, but it is very annoying to play against. This is due to the projectiles bouncing off the first hit and igniting more players than the first. Additionally, the knockback that triggers upon hitting burning targets with a Scorch shot projectile is super annoying. Here's what I would do with the Scorch shot. Remove the knockback and replace it with a slow effect for one second. The slow should be similar to being hit by the Natasha at medium range for 2 to 3 hits. Still, the weapon would be encouraging spam a lot, so to make it a little less cancerous, the next balance change should be to reduce the afterburn damage by 33%. This would not nerf the weapon into the ground, while at the same time make it not as oppressive to play against as it is. Moving on to weapons that are actually too good in the current environment. Most of you will agree that the Wrangler for Engineer needs some rework because it's a little overpowered. The main reason is the stat that reduces incoming damage to the sentry by 66%, which effectively triples the health of the sentry. If you wrangle a level 3 sentry it has 648 health. This can even withstand a whole stock uber push easily. If you wrangle a mini sentry, this puts that thing to 300 HP effective health. It's really overpowered. All of this shouldn't be like that. All the other stats of the wrangler are fine. The aim assist and increased fire rate are okay, but also make the engineer more vulnerable to being flanked or backstabbed. So this aspect of the item is balanced. The Wrangler shield is the main culprit. My balancing change is this. Make the shield not reduce 66% of the damage, but have it reduce only 50% of incoming damage. The Wrangler would still be good, but not crazy overpowered. With that change, Wrangle sentries still would be viable, because the repairs are also reduced by 50% and not 66%. At the same time, it becomes realistic to destroy a wrangled sentry without it being sad. Believe it or not, that's all there is for weapons that need to be nerfed. Don't worry, I address the vaccinator later. Next up, we come to the category of weapons that are currently unusable and need a buff in order to be viable. Let's start with the ones that need a change the most. The first weapon has got to be one that many players consider the worst weapon in the game, the gas passer for Pyro. 
The weapon has an insane recharge time of 60 seconds. Cut that down to 20 seconds and it would still be bad. And also get rid of the recharge by dealing damage mechanic altogether. You need to deal 750 damage to do it, which is absurd. I was positively surprised that Valve actually changed weapon stats in the last update. They changed the gas passer so that it now makes enemies wet. So you can combo with a Neon Annihilator, which was really necessary. 20 seconds recharge time is okay. Think about the Gerati. This one also has a 20 seconds recharge time. The Gerati's effect is to make players take mini crits instead of normal damage. This is a lot stronger than the gas passer's effect which causes afterburn damage, even on pyros. The next one that needs balancing is the Righteous Bison for Soldier. This weapon is part of the laser weapon arsenal and has a cool design. Nobody in their right mind uses the Bison as it currently is, because it deals laughable amounts of damage. 11 damage at maximum range and only 24 at point blank range with a crit doing only 60 damage. And I thought the pea shooter had low damage. The bison also has a slow traveling projectile and a slow attack interval. My balance change is this. Double the damage. This would make the weapon at least usable. It still would not be good though. The projectile can pierce through players and even hit one target several times. So it's fine to have the slow projectile speed. The next bad weapon that needs a change is the Pompson. This one also has a slow projectile speed, okay damage, but the projectiles don't penetrate players and also get blocked by your teammates. At the weapon's current state it is unusable. The weapon needs two slight changes that would drastically improve its usefulness. Increase the projectile speed by 20% and have it penetrate only teammates. The weapon would be maybe a little too good if it would penetrate enemies as well, because the Pompson also has the stat that it reduces enemy uber or cloak when hitting a medic or spy. And this stat should remain untouched. When you would spam the improved Pompson in chokes, this stat, in combination with it penetrating enemies, would possibly be a little too good, encouraging spam, which is not a good thing. You could hit a soldier and his pocket medic after him and have the medic's uber range, which would be too good. Have it only penetrate teammates because this stat makes the pumps unusable in the current state of the game. The next item that needs a buff is the buffalo steak sandwich. When you consume this item, it gives heavy increased movement speed and mini crits for 16 seconds, as well as a restriction to melee items during the duration. It also has a hidden stat that nerfs the items significantly. It says, increases damage taken by 20%. Get rid of this stat entirely to make the weapon usable to some extent at least. It still would be not good but at the very least you could have some fun with it, which is very hard in its current state. The next weapon that needs a change in order to become usable is the equalizer for soldier. I honestly had to boot up TF2 and look up the item name because I haven't used or seen this weapon for years, which tells you how useless and bad it is. So the melee damage increases relative to your health getting lower. The equalizer damage starts with a measly 33 damage at full health and ends with 107 damage at 1 health. You also get minus 90% less healing from medics. We also have the escape plan, which is one of soldiers best melee items. The escape plan increases soldiers movement speed relative to his health being low. We don't need another item for soldier that works similar to this, so my suggestion is to get rid of the equalizer's damage increase stat relative to your health entirely. 
I think a drastic way to change this weapon is needed, to make it viable and a fun weapon to use, but not overpowered. My suggestion is this. Remove all the current stats. Make the soldier melee similar to the big honor for spy. This knife gives you a speed boost after a successful backstab. It would be so fun to have the equalizer do the same. After a successful melee kill, you get a brief speed boost, similar to the one you get from the disciplinary action. Also keep random crits, because it would be extremely fun to have a soldier kill several guys one after another, giving the soldier a good speed buff to run from victim to victim. It would also be fun to use the weapon as a last resort when you are on low health. Then, when you got the kill, you can use the speed boost to get to safety. To make the new equalizer not overpowered, a negative stat is necessary. Have a deal 10% less damage, so it heals 58 damage on swing and 174 on a random crit. The next weapon on the list that needs a buff in order to become usable is the Ullapul Caper, or Caper for short. The weapon has a slower swing speed deploys very slowly and has no random crits. This is all fine. The worst part that makes this weapon actually unusable is the fact that after the cable exploded, it never gets replenished, unless you run to a respawn cabinet or die. The cable will be a fine niche weapon if this set is added. Replenishes after 16 seconds. This would make the cable knight so much more fun. The cable's original downsides are okay. In my opinion, the weapon is only good with a splendid screen anyway, because that shield gives you a crit swing after a full charge. This makes the Kaba one-shot everything except the fully overhealed heavy. The next weapon balancing changes are not about a change that is desperately needed, but just some small adjustments that are necessary. The weapons I mentioned now are all usable, but they still need to be fixed to some extent. Starting with the thermal thruster. The jetpack for Pyro has a lot of bugs, which don't have a dramatic effect. One thing that is very unnecessary is the fact that it fails to deploy some percentage of the time. I have used this weapon extensively for years, and my estimate is a 5% chance that the weapon just doesn't deploy. So, when you select a weapon and left click, the pyro performs one initial lift off, followed by a jetpack thrust in the direction the pyro is looking. A good 5% of the time, this initial lift off just doesn't happen when you left click. So, you have to activate again, which messes up your timing entirely. This is extremely bad and annoying and it is also not listed in-game in the weapon stats, nor on the wiki. Get rid of this to make the weapon usable every time. Why should this be the only weapon in the game that sometimes doesn't work? It is outrageous and needs a change. Despite that, the jetpack is a good weapon in the current game. Next up is the airstrike. The weapon is almost fine as it is. Leave all the stats as they currently are. When you collected 4 heads, the airstrike has 8 rockets in the clip in total. The problem with this is, after you emptied your clip, you spend a long time reloading. Also, your ammo reserve gets depleted very fast. To improve the weapon moderately, I suggest a slightly faster reload time and a slightly higher ammo reserve a faster reload time of 15% and 4 additional rockets in the ammo reserve is what I would currently change about the weapon. In its current state, it is not a very good weapon, but certainly usable. My suggested weapon changes would be a quality of life improvement that the airstrike users would love and other players probably wouldn't mind. The next weapon that I wouldn't mind seeing a slight balance change being applied to is the backburner. Again, the weapon stats are fine and it's balanced. Similar to the thermal thruster, this weapon has the problem that it sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't. What I'm talking about 
is the hit registration for the guaranteed crits from behind. A lot of the time you don't get any crits despite you standing right behind an enemy who walks forward. This is due to the vector the flames are coming from and the vector the victim is facing. Those apparently have to align perfectly for you to get the crit damage. You also have individual lag, which does not help. The source of this problem is a bit complicated to work on, but I would love to have this weapon fixed, so that it works as intended all the time. The problem is similar to the spice backstabs, which sometimes just don't work despite me standing right behind the enemy. A weapon that is ok, but currently unused is the sharpened volcano fragment. Upon melee hit, it sets opponents ablaze, which is stupid since the pyro has a flamethrower which does that job even better. To make people actually use the volcano fragment, it needs a complete makeover. It already looks very good and it's a shame to see it with stupid stats that give no incentive to ever use that thing. So my balance suggestion is this, a 30% damage increase and for the downside a 20% slower firing speed and a 10% movement speed penalty when active. This would be similar to the Scotsman skull cutter for demo, a weapon that really hits hard but you are slow as hell while using it. Think about it, that thing is a big axe made of stone, it should weigh a lot so it should hit really hard but take longer to swing around. The weapon would not be overpowered but it would at least become a viable option with these changes. Next up on the rebalancing table we have the hot hand for pyro again. <laughs> this weapon is so bad that it's unusable if you want to do anything other than digging around. My quick suggestion is to cut the current damage penalty down to 12% and then see how it works. It would certainly be fun to see pyros running around slapping people left and right. Maybe this would be too good. For a game developer working on their game, you make balance changes, then if you notice that one of your changes was inappropriate, you dial it back a notch. Look at Warcraft 3 where this is being done and this game gets balance updates up to this day, despite it being 20 years old. Lastly, the weapon that needs a minor change is also for Pyro, the third degree. At this point in time, this weapon is a straight upgrade to the stock fire axe. It is a flaw in weapon balancing if one unlock makes the stock weapon useless, so it needs a change. I wouldn't like a complete rework of the weapon because I love how the weapon works. Just give it a slight downside to make it less good than stock when you hit a single enemy. I say 10% slower firing speed is in order. This would make the weapon at least on paper not a direct upgrade to the fire axe and I could die a happy man knowing that the TF2 weapon balancing is taken care of. There are some other weapons that many people think need a rework. For example the Vaccinator, the Red Tape Recorder or the Vitus Thor. I think the Vaccinator is fine as it is. Sure, it is oppressive to play against a good Vaccinator medic, but keep in mind that you are free to change your strategy if your current way of handling things doesn't work. Mind blowing, right? A Vax medic is weak to flamethrowers especially the flock. The Vax Medic is also susceptible to melee damage and backstabs, so there are various ways of countering that. Just pick Pyro, Demonite or Spy. The Vaxnet itself is not overpowered in general because it takes a lot of skill and micromanagement to switch resistance types and pop bubbles in a split second. This item rewards players who are skilled at using it by being very strong in their hands. If you have trouble beating a good vaccinator medic, just pick one of the three methods of countering the vax medic and you'll be fine. It is not the weapon's fault if people are not creative enough to find a counter to it. Plus, you need a ton of skill 
handling the vaccinator to use it to its fullest potential, so it's absolutely okay. For the other two items that I have mentioned, the red tape recorder and vital saw, I made a whole video about it explaining their intended use. In short, I think they were intended for newer players. The red tape is bad for a good spy player, but a noob can just sap all the buildings of a turtle NG, then die trying. The NG destroys all sappers. Then the spy at least did something by leveling all the buildings down to level 1. With a regular sapper, the spy would have achieved nothing. For the Viter Saw, it's similar. Here the noob medic can retain some of his uber when he got caught out of position, assuming the medic took out his melee to land a few swings right before he died. I'm sure there are a couple of weapons that could need a rework, but I'm not sure on how to fix them. For example, the Liberty Launcher or the Razorback and Darwin's Danger Shield. The Liberty Launcher is the worst rocket launcher by a long shot, mostly because the damage is ridiculously low. Some people can make it work by insane fast switch plays with the reserve shooter, so it has its uses, I guess. The two sniper items in question that are a bit out of place are a difficult topic. I'm in no position to give any sniper balance suggestions, because I barely played the class. The Razorback has its purpose though. Sure, you can just switch to your revolver as spy, but the Razorback is actually good against one spy weapon, the Your Eternal Reward. This weapon makes it difficult to re-disguise, so you rather not take out your revolver, or in this case the L'Etranger. As for the Darwin's Danger Shield, I think that it is okay. Having fought hundreds of snipers using this item as a pyro, I don't have any issue with it. Just whack him with your melee if the flamethrower doesn't work. I just don't see where the issue is. Now we are done with my balance changes in the TF2 Dream update. But what else is there to be fixed? Another thing that would increase the game experience for any player drastically would be a complete rework of the matchmaking system. On some days I get put in a team with 11 free to players against a lot of veterans. Needless to say these games are pure hell if I actually try to win. TF2 needs matchmaking that evenly matches teams. Even without bots and cheaters, at least 60% of the games are unfun and trash because of the poor matchmaking that is resulting in one team rolling the other. A mechanic of the game to make matches more even might be to have a new autobalancing feature that autobalances the team's top player when the game notices that this team rolls the other team very hard. A rework of the autobalancing mechanic is also needed. It has happened so many times that I was in a game with a friend and one of us got autobalanced. This happened so often that we were not even surprised anymore. One flaw in matchmaking is that it puts you in a game that is about to end. It shouldn't be possible to join a game that will last no more than one minute or that is almost pushed in last. There are also a ton of community fixes, which most of them being co of cosmetic nature. Valve has no reason to not include many of them to the game. Since many years, the only new addition to the game came from the workshop. In other words, they were created by the community. I don't see a reason why Valve wouldn't include many of those visual item fixes. They would make the game a lot more polished. Also, the update policy after my dream update needs to change. We all know that Valve does summer, Halloween and winter updates every year, each of them consisting only of community generated maps, cosmetics, war paints and unusual effects. The quality control on these should be a lot better because a lot of trash has been approved that has no business anywhere. There also should be a restriction to the amount of new unusual effects being added to the game per update. In the summer 2023 update alone, 
20 unusual effects have been added, which is insane. Three good effects that are not too over the top with neon colors would have been enough. With all of those changes, the game would be almost perfect in my eyes. Please let me know if you agree or disagree with my proposed changes. I know that it would be better to actually test the changes, but my balancing ideas are mostly down to earth without drastic changes for the most part. I won't be a doomer who says there's no hope that any of my suggestions will be implemented in the game. It is very much possible after seeing that they actually changed the gas passer so that it makes enemies wet now. In any case, thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. If you want to help me grow my small channel, I would very much appreciate you liking the video, leaving a comment and drop a subscription if you haven't already. If this is your first time watching my videos, I do weird weapon loadout gameplay commentary, TF2 challenges, live gameplay commentary and rambling videos such as this one. See you guys around. Bye.